gets to do this like four times a day. He gets to do the clapper and he's happy. Fucking excited. Never seen someone get so excited to fucking use a flippy. Dude, this is like some news anchor shit. Welcome to Good Morning, like Good Morning America. This is, huh? We didn't didn't fuck around when I built this. Some anchor, yeah, I love that shit. My guy here put it all together too. He did all this shit. Dude, this is yeah, this is legit. This is the most realist looking setup I've ever. The only thing I like Mickey for podcasts, right? Oh, dude, this is nice. The only thing I kind of Mickey Mouse was the background, so we figure it out. No, that dude. He said no. Nah. This, <laughs> this is good. This is solid. The tables, I like the table. This it's table, cool. this table is actually this designed is, just for podcasting. Yeah. That's all this guy does. Yeah, um, this, he hooked it up, and yeah, so we, I shout him out a lot. This is really cool. I, you know what I loved about like like Rogan's podcast is all the trinkets and things that he has sitting on his table because they're like conversation starters. You see them, you're like, dude, what are all these things? But a lot of them are like gifts things that, that were give given yeah. him from guests and stuff. So that's what's cool. But like. Like when he did the whole fucking spaceship looking podcast, nobody liked it. So he went back, back to, to the, the fucking brick one, wall and yeah. yeah, it looked way nicer. Yeah, it was, it was people like, want to feel comfortable. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I like podcasts that feel like home. Or how about what's the what's the dude that has the podcast on this fucking street sidewalk in New York? Oh, I haven't seen it. The it's like a heavier set guy. I think he's a rapper. Oh, dope. And right. he it's literally like sidewalk something, and it's like they're on the sidewalk. That's dope. Yeah, cool. Welcome to the show, guys. You caught us mid-conversation, but today, um, not only do I have my co-host, Brian, I have my homeboy, Isaac Kalayo. What's going on? Thanks Welcome, for, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks yeah, for yeah, being yeah. here. Yeah. So for those that don't know, Isaac is an amazing artist. Um, I thought he was a stripper. Yeah, <laughs> he looks like he could be, probably. Well, full-time. <laughs> it's, it's on the side of <laughs> part-time artist. Uh, but he's a, he's a classic painter. He, he paints... Classic. Uh, well, go ahead. Tell me. Tell me what you would you would uh, say about your style. Um, I think the best way to describe it is taking classical, uh, Renaissance, Baroque, neoclassicism like imagery, and then throwing uh, or vandalizing it. I, well, you know, I wouldn't even call vandalizing it because I never wanted it. I never wanted it to seem like I was going over those paintings. I wanted it to be more like a collaborative project between street art and the Renaissance, where like the two are intertwined and mixed, you know? You ever see a, like Cat and Hat, the movie where he's like, his world is colliding with the regular world and it's like all these like weird, like it's like a perfect like mixture of these things. That's what I was aiming for was like, imagine if, you know, someone like a Basquiat and a Da Vinci got in a studio together and like did some collaborative project. That was like the, the basis of what I was aiming for, and then the whole st- the whole reason behind it, the um, the story behind it is that I wanted to bridge the gap between um, the people, the older crowd who are, you know, in tune with the Renaissance and Baroque stuff, and introduce and and build a conver- and like introduce the conversation with people my age who can't have that that you know conversation and that dialogue with with that type of artwork because they resonate with street art they resonate with contemporary pop art exactly. that stuff um so i wanted to bring the two together to be able to have a young person and, a, and an older person be able to look at this one piece of artwork and and relate to it on some degree where they can meet in the middle you know a marriage between two worlds that don't inherently belong but they work yeah so that was the whole basis behind it it's cool because uh it's cool that you mentioned that it's not like you're taking other people's old paintings and then adding street art elements to them. You're actually painting classic images in the old technique and then marrying it with newer stuff as well. Yeah, some of them are reinterpretations though. You know, yeah. I've done a lot of reinterpretations of Da Vinci work, yeah. um, Caravaggio and Rembrandt stuff. Um, but it's not so much like calling it my own. I've never said like, oh, you know, these are my paintings. I've, they're only, um, the only part of it that's really me is the smiley face. That That's like my contribution to to the whole piece itself, where it's more like, hey, look at this amazing painting that, that we tend to forget about. Like it's a cornerstone of, of art. And look at this, you know, this, it's we're throwing the street stuff to it, it's making it raw and have it's it's I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm inventing anything I'm reinventing every like the things that I'm into 
I'm reinventing. But you're actually recreating these images too. You're you're actually. Oh, I'm them. I'm painting them. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because a lot of people they don't think realize probably, that. They think that I'm like yeah. taking the images off the internet and like painting over them, at, like yeah, I'm printing no. them out, painting over them, and then that's it. No, when I'm like, no, you're actually I'm actually painting, painting reinterpretations the of like Mona Lisa Lucia from stuff. scratch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm doing master. I would consider them master copies. Yeah. But halfway into you know after I'm. Um, rendering half the painting you know I'm, I'm adding my street stuff with it you know which is oil pastels and spray paint and crink and sometimes markers and really? things like that crink yeah. too, huh? some some of them cr the yeah. the pray for paris piece has crink on it yeah. it's the her sleeves are crink Interesting. yeah that's dope yeah so that not that's a lot of cool. people know that that yeah. that's you know there's real street elements to yeah. that yeah yeah not that all of them have the crink on it uh, it's you know it comes like when I feel like I need to use it, but um, but yeah it's it's a it's a fun conversation cool for that me. You have like a lot of different uh, a lot of different uh, tools too. Like most artists are pretty like hyper focused in one area. If you sketch, yeah, yeah, you sketch. Yeah. If you yeah. use oil, use oil. If you you know if you're pasting or pasting you know yeah. what I mean? it's cool that you can combine everything together well I've that's changed over the years like you know when I was up until I was 17 18 somewhere between 17 and 19 I was strictly doing pencil stuff you know I've mm -hmm. dad played around with crayons and color pencils and markers and pen a couple acrylic paintings here and there but I, my main source of making art was via graphite on paper and I broke out of that to, you know, create my own identity. So my work didn't look like my dad's work. And then I started painting, and then I, I, you know, got really comfortable with oil painting. And now I'm using oil pastels and more spray paint. I mean, I've always done graffiti as a kid, but like now I'm like actually like it's very much a part of every piece that I do. Where like I can't not exclude it. Like it's got to be in there because wow. then it doesn't look like my work anymore. And oil painting is like, <coughs> I mean, it's it's obviously the most classic uh it's what we think of as art like museum art you know and uh right it's to me is like the toughest like you know be taking a picture that's a sketch on wood or canvas or whatever and then bringing it to life through oil painting is mm. like that is like a masterpiece to me in my mind of how i think of it and my limited knowledge of the way everything works because it, it just looks incredibly hard i mean i know homeboy bob ross made it look really easy on tv but like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but like there's obviously some yeah. some technique to bringing things to life you know well the thing about bob ross and i love bob ross yeah. bob ross is absolutely 110 percent one of my teachers I, the, when i first yeah. started painting i think we all grew up watching it. no no like yeah. you're, you're like i don't even understand when i started painting i was watching bob ross every single time i painted like while i was painting he was playing in the, in the background. background. Yeah. And I wasn't even painting landscapes. I was just, I needed to hear his voice. Yeah. I needed to watch him paint, see how he applied paint, how he mixed. His mixing skills were like crazy. And <clears throat> how he was able to work so quickly. I wanted to be able to adopt that ability to work very quickly, work wet on wet. And be able to mix like really fast and then just apply it straight on yeah you know that's a, a technique of painting it's a la prima a la prima is wet on wet you paint from start to finish in a rapid that's kind of like when someone's doing an oil study and they have a live model it's just very rapid there's not no layers that really are involved or blending see the way da vinci painted um the italian word for it is uh, called sfumato which is like a sm like a smoky effect where he, you would create a, a, a layers and transparent layers of oil paint and build it up over time and and like very thin films of a color where you you know back in those days painters would paint the whole thing monochromatically in, in black and uh, black and grayscale and then they would add the chroma on top with you know thin mixing it with linseed oil so that it was very translucent so that it was like kind of like a gel or like a filter you know you you would you have a black and white painting and then you throw like a flesh filter on top and now you get like a flesh tone kind of like like the process yeah. of silk screening it's you throw those colors on top mm -hmm. and and you start to build and that's why those paintings back then look so lifelike 
because when the light hits it, it's cutting through all those layers and you could like see the depth. That's why those paintings look like they're like fleshy. You know, mm -hmm. they're not like a, they look alive. Yeah, where it's like you have artists like Rembrandt and uh, Velasquez who was painting wet on wet and they were painting very thick where they would mix the color that they needed to apply and once it was once that stroke hit that's it that's that that color that stroke is staying there unless they're adding a highlight on top where that's not how that was done prior to that it was you know it was a buildup of color like little by little so it's like very different ways and, and I use both techniques. I mean, it depends on what it is that I'm painting. I find myself painting more in the Rembrandt Velasquez style because that allows me to work very quickly. I don't need to let anything dry. I don't need to like do. Do they know how long like, like Da Vinci's process was? Like, like take a piece and like, what, do you know anything about what his average time was? Well, I mean, I'm not the best art historian. I mean, I've only, you know, from You're what pretty, I've read sound in pretty, videos, pretty well read and spoken about it though. Apparently, his paintings would take forever because he was just so involved in so many different, like, uh, what do you call them? Like subjects of, of study. Engineering. Yeah, math, like he was into botany. Stuff. He was into mathematics. He was into engineering. He was I into see architecture. Him as like a chaotic genius, like that's just like oh <laughs> yeah, in like every direction. So the crazy thing about Da Vinci, it, from what is told is that he would whenever he would meet people he would tell people that he was an artist last that he like art and painting was like last on the fucking totem pole where he was he was an engineer first or an architect or all these other things and his dad was the one that wanted him to become a painter because he was illegitimate and when you're oh. illegitimate back in those days it's hard for you to get like a good job or something like like legitimacy was like it, like it was a big deal so he was illegitimate and his dad was like well look I, I'm gonna help you get into something and he helped him get into the workshop of Verrocchio at the time Verrocchio was like uh, like a super prestigious well-known painter he was like the man yeah, in the town yeah. right so he was in his workshop and then got really good quick just really good quick to the point where he did a an angel on a painting by Verrocchio and when he when that guy saw his angel painting he was like I'm done I'm not painting ever again <laughs> and he never painted ever again Verrocchio never painted ever, ever again, again because, after because he da saw Vinci da Vinci's uh, angel put an painting angel on yeah. one of his pieces yeah wow. like you see their angels side by side and, they and were like, so like uh, oh, dude. passionate for yeah like, like it was just a like a career would be over just cause he, I can't paint ever again he was, <laughs> he was just like dude this is fucking <laughs> insane I'm I'm, I quit yeah cause he was just like <laughs> I quit like I can't this is that was like the no one is going to ever achieve that that level of skill and da vinci last, was crazy like that yeah <laughs> so the crazy thing about uh leonardo is that he took oil painting and made it really popular prior to him he took oil painting from van eyck van eyck was known for being like the pioneer of oil painting where painting was done with egg tempera they would get the egg whites and mix or the the yeah the egg and whites mix, and like, mix real. it with pigment for you know yeah. bone marrow and and and, and, and for white spices and, and spices things, yeah. and herbs for different colors oh, real. so Earthy. yeah so those well that's how they still use oil paint but the thing is the egg tempera was va very fast drying it was almost like acrylic and it was like a precursor to, uh, to acrylic for its application so all of those frescoes and mm -hmm. all those paintings and murals, that's done with egg tempera because it's, 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 you, they paint it very and it dries quickly. The way that is applied is it's done in, cr in a cross hatching technique where they're doing a bunch of lines and then they're building those layers with lines. That's, that's how they were painting those paintings. The way frescoes are done, or it's crazy. I've never done a fresco, and I've always wanted to experiment and try it. Just frescoes are like the, like the ceiling at the... Yeah, so how it's done is they get fresh plaster, and they, they, they cover a wall with fresh, wet plaster. And then they have, back in the day, the way they would make their stencils is they would have a sketch on paper. They would 
punch, puncture a bunch of holes around the sketches, put that paper on the wet plaster and start powdering the holes with like a red, I forgot what the powder is, but stencil, stencil to make a stencil it. through the little holes. They take off the paper, they would have a crude stencil on the wall and they would have this opportunity to be able to start painting very quickly. So then they would start painting very rapidly on this fresh plaster and, and, and they would have to do la layers and layers. So that was like the way of making art. And then Da Vinci took Van Eyck's oil painting where they were mixing pigment with linseed oil out of linseeds. And that was like, it made the paint really rich. You could scrawl in it and like push it and it would take a long time to dry. And linseed oil takes like, it's super like, like it's thick. It like it take when you mix it with pigment, it becomes so thick it's like pasty. Mm -hmm. It's the difference. Where egg tempera is very wet, drippy. Yeah. It was like you know, it was, it was very drippy. Where where oil painting is very like chunky and you know it's like pasty. So, um, different way of painting. And, and and he would break down the oil paint, you know, in very very thin transparent layers. And he pretty much invented his style that is now used today and, and yeah it's crazy it's like insane Amazing. then you Great have mind. yeah it's artists back then were like totally beyond like master your years craftsman. oh you that's had to study under that's why that guy that's why Verrucchio quit yeah Verrucchio was like Verrucchio, I am my done <laughs> my bad <laughs> uh, um, that's why because yeah. they were so passionate about like you would have to it wouldn't matter if it was carpentry or, or masonry yeah. or whatever it was. You had to study under somebody for like a master for yeah. years to achieve, yeah. to be able to build or do whatever it was. So yeah, and and Verrocchio was like super respected. He was one of those guys that was like, if you went to get a, a painting, you got you went to Verrocchio to get a painting. You know, back then, see people don't realize that art back then was about painting religious iconography, painting royalty and painting biblical stories the reason why i mean in my opinion from what i've gathered the reason why the churches were commissioning those paintings by master painters were to give the people a visual yeah to give people a visual of what they were being taught so that they can instill fear but hope in them at the same time. Yeah. When you go to Italy and you see those paintings in those churches, they floor you. I'm not a religious person. Like I'm not, you know, a religious Catholic or Christian or, or anything such. But when you go there, you can't help but to surrender to the amount of power and belief that people put forth into that religion and and those paintings bring those stories to life when you hear the stories of samson and delilah or jesus being crucified or uh any of those stories you know the battle between heaven and hell you see them they look real they make you believe like i under i get why these people would believe this sh shit because they would go to church and they would see Jesus Christ so lifelike in their face. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And when it, not even realizing, like, I think the Salvatore Mundi painting is original. Like the reference is of is of uh, either Cesare Borgia or uh, what's his name? One of the the, one the, the Medici's. One, one of the Medici. Yeah, like it was a refer. They were referencing yeah. him. As like he, they're using him as Jesus Christ, you know. Uh -huh. So it's like it's crazy because it's like. Well, they actually his the yeah the, the the classic Jesus that we know is actually one of the. Well, the, one of Da Vinci's paintings is using one of those people as a model yeah. for Jesus because you know they didn't have they weren't painting that shit out of their head they were yeah. using people mm -hmm. as models you know I think there was a. There's a story a friend of mine re, brought it to my attention about. Caravaggio that he was commissioned by like a duke or someone someone or or, so, or, or no I think it was a a cardinal I mm, think that sounds right that commissioned him a painting of uh, like a, a virgin mary or something of that nature and Caravaggio was like he was like a, he was like the gangster artist at the time he was a vandal for sure he 
he used the retina of that time. Yeah. Used uh, a prostitute as the model. <laughs> of course. <laughs> for that and and yeah, like the irony, like the irony of that is like amazing. Yeah, right? and I think the the cardinal like he was super upset, but he still paid him. Yeah. Yeah. And the painting was still amazing. Yeah. But yeah, he used the he used the prostitute. Yeah. And and I've and, and I like the I've, in that thing. I've used a lot of the same things. I've used yeah. a lot of strippers and dancers and like people Singer, that yeah. that you wouldn't ever expect to model something like because obviously in some of my paintings I'm doing things depicting redepicting, you know, re religious iconography. Yeah. And I'm using models who are tatted the fuck up or strippers who are, you know, mm -hmm. like, or, you know, Telling they're doing drugs story. and stuff. Yeah. So it's like the and irony in that is who crazy. Are, who we look up to and who our heroes are. Right. I mean, you know? you know, it's like a superhero anywhere. Anyone can wear the cape. That's you right. know, it's just the cape that you're, you know, anybody can portray Jesus Christ. It's just a story. You know what I mean? It's I the story. That was, of his, that was his main goal, right? Was to let everybody know that it was possible to achieve. Yeah, what I mean, he was capable of right. Like that's what he was trying to. Yeah, because what he was trying to portray was that me coming from the walk of life that I do and and the company that he kept, which was, I guess from what they say was pretty questionable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what did he say? I'm needed here. In the lows, not the highs, basically, right? No. Like uh, to to bring life to this. So no. it's all how we bring it to life. That's dope, though, that you it that you. Yeah, I've done that too because it's an interesting that. story. Yeah, one of the pieces I just posted was uh, I, I posted. I said something about the story behind this piece is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, some people asked what was the story behind it. I didn't bother posting it because it just was a lot to write. But in a in a nutshell, when I broke up with my ex girl, uh, like I was just trying to do anything to forget about it. Like I was going through a tough time, and I went to uh, I went to the strip club for the first time with my homie as just like a fuck it. You know what I'm saying? And that girl that I painted was the first, like, stripper to ever give me a dance. And it was like, I don't know, I remember we had a good conversation in the middle of the strip club. Like, we we're, like, building rapport. It wasn't even about, like, the dance. It was just, we were just hitting it off yeah, super yeah, well. Connection. And uh, she was super dope. We remained friends, and she was in a relationship with for years. So, like, when she finally be uh, got out of it, I was like, hey, dude, I want to use you for a painting. Because she was very hard to get a hold of. And... I didn't even want to bother her. I was like, whatever. But I got her to, uh, I convinced her to let me paint her, and I painted her in this, like, this light where I didn't want her to be perceived as an object in which she does for work. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I wanted to paint her with the respect of a, a woman as yeah. every woman should be, you know, perceived with and, and treated with respect. Uh, so that was, like, the the you know, the irony of it. it was she's, a, she's a stripper and men treat her like an object, but I wanted to paint her in a way that she wasn't looked at as an object, but still keeping it, uh, like not having her nude, but it was implied nudity. And then mm -hmm. all the detail was in her face, yeah. not in her body. Like the body is, her body is just an extension of who she is like in her eyes, you know? Yeah. So that was, that was the story behind that piece. That That's was fun. Dope. Yeah, it was a fun piece to Super do. Super cool. I'm um, sure she, uh, Oh yeah, and she was happy with that as well. Yeah, she was up. She was it, that one of those pieces were in my show. Yeah, she was there. It was dope. She was like, she was loving it, dude. Everybody was like, I did two pieces of her. I did one of her uh, face, and then I did the one of her laying down. Her mm -hmm. ass was sticking out on the bed. Yeah, and um, yeah, dude, everybody loved it. People were so seeing her stand by the paintings. They're all like trying to come up to her and shit. And I'm like, dude, relax, chill out. Like, <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> Go away. Uh, yeah. Who's your biggest? Uh, inspiration. They run in, in the in the many, dude. It's yeah. so hard to. I was just. It's funny. I, I had a conversation with one of my homies yesterday. They were asking me the same questions, and I, I, it's so hard to answer that because my inspiration changes. Yeah. In the, it's like what I'm inspired by in that moment. Mm -hmm. I've always been inspired by the masters. Like Da Vinci is my pinnacle that is dude da vinci's like jesus christ to me you know what i mean like that's someone who i i look up to and i i pray to like that is um the person who uh 
is above all, uh, not just p- because it's craftsmanship, but his My next to him as a person. Your favorite, but I guess you answered. Well, that. Yeah, <laughs> like he's he's would yeah. I would put him above everything. I mean, I wouldn't even call it like a favorite. There isn't a word for how much I I appreciate his career um, and his life. Yeah. He, there's so much that about I mean, still Da Vinci. Think, yeah, yeah, there's so much about him that I relate to, and from what I've read, I'm like I've. It's, it's some scary it's funny one time my dad said something that was like it fed my ego a little too much and this was prior to me going to italy but um he's he says something i had painted the mona lisa and he goes dude imagine if you're da vinci reincarnated like for real and i'm like i like sat and thought about that i was like dude don't tell me that because i'm gonna believe that shit you know what I'm like, I'm fucking, like my ego will let me believe, believe it yeah, yeah i was like, was like i'm like dude there's thing. so many similarities i'm like like the same like childhood issues and yeah. and fucking you know the same like uh interests you know there's so many similarities and like that i see in myself that i'm like damn dude it's, you know but he, he was also bisexual i mean i'm not bi but you know may, maybe in the past life i was maybe I I just, everybody was a little bi back then though huh you, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it was one of those things where, you know, religion was time. such a, a heavy, um, it, it was something that, that was being pressed on the people that it was kind of rebellious. I mean, but dude, you I know. Mean the Greeks and everybody were at it before then, too. Well, Greeks you know, I think back in those times, people looked at sexuality differently. Uh-huh. People looked at sexuality in a way that was poetic it was sophisticated it was much more romantic far more romantic yeah. it was Cause people with long or right odyssey it was yeah things, you like know? it was the longing for a love that you've had for this whole journey that you'd never even get to see again probably right but would write letters and love endlessly type right. of like the passion and then you so look passionate. At, right and then you look at people back then i mean it was all about beauty it was just about like people were just fucking beautiful you know what i mean mm-hmm. so and then and then you see the greek sculptures and you these it's like beauty was we don't have uh you know the back then they didn't have what we have to like the, the plastic surgery and the stuff and, and and the whole like oh she's he she isn't my type or you got to look like this person but like beauty was in everything and and they saw beauty and men saw beauty in men and women saw beauty in women you know i mean I, I, that's just but i think when you're an artist you, that's just how it works you know what i mean i mean i i'm i can't i'd be lying if i said I, I i didn't i didn't see men that were that looked beautiful that were like this is a good looking guy and 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 you see them in a in a light that that you would a woman but it's like it's obviously like sexually i'm not attracted to that but as an artist you see the beauty in people yeah. and and i've I, yeah i've always i've always you know seen beauty in both men and women especially and dude especially those paintings i mean dude the human figure is so fascinating to me yeah. i've always been obsessed with anatomy um i've always been obsessed with anatomy w- when it comes to fit people and people who aren't fit I think the body is such a the human body is such an interesting form to look at, and how it operates and how it works. The, um, I mean, it's like you know when you when you take a se- imagine if everybody walked around naked, yeah, and clothes weren't a thing. It'd be a lot more interesting, actually. You wouldn't you have hide behind anything. You it, that exactly. You have I, to be yourself. Right. I, you know what's funny is everybody's I, insecurities automatically come out. Everybody's or, or wearing a costume. Yeah. And this is and my to tell a story. Right. This is my thing with women. Like I obviously like I'm sure you guys know that my my interaction with women Hold that thought, right? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Damn, thirty minutes, 30 minutes went by quick. Yeah, bro. It goes yeah. fast. We have we have a lot to talk about, so it's better. Oh yeah. Not well, with everybody. Well, we could talk about the same subject for forever. A long time. We haven't even like expanded. We're still on Da Vinci, bro. I uh, know. <laughs> <It's like laughs> That's how deep it is, you know. Yeah. But you have such a good knowledge of it, and it's totally different than everything we normally talk about. So I love right. it. Y'all got a fly in here or something? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna just. Take He's sinking the audio. Uh, nice. Go back to the to the body. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you guys have a the costume. Uh, yeah, you know, you guys have a, a little knowledge of how I have a relationship with women, and I paint a lot of women, and I paint a lot of women nude. And whenever I'm talking to, 
you know, these models and a lot of them ask me, you know, why do you, why do you like painting nudes? And for me, if they strip away those costumes and those masks, you know, if for me, if I, if I had a choice, everybody would be ass naked. Why? Be one, I, the body doesn't arouse me like that. I'm not aroused by, by the human body. Like it just doesn't. Um, I was exposed to pornography pretty young. So like, at an early age, I, the body was just sort of like, eh, for me, you know what I mean? It was more about, um, uh, the, the, the person themselves, ele like the, when the person themselves are beautiful, they elevate their physical beauty. Yes. So my thing is, is always been, you know, I, 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 I like, I love, that's why I paint shirtless and I'm always like, doing inter like photo so shoots and I'm shirtless because I'm yeah. like, you like, look, this is, this is me. Yeah. This is who I am. I'm not wearing no fancy shit. I'm not putting on a facade. You see me in my bare skin and, and this is, this is all that I am. And you know, I have these, I have this thing where like, we like with girls, you know, often like I'm, I'm a guy, so I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it a thousand. You know, when women ask me for say nudes and dick pics and shit, like I'm not, hesitant on doing that shit at all because I'm like yeah here here's my body now I'm relying on nothing but pure personality because you already know what I look like mm -hmm. now you know what I'm now you know what I'm about physically yeah. so now it's not a like oh like like come like you, you go come over here so I can show you no it's like here I'm ass naked in front of you like oh, this is all this is me this is who I th this is me so now I have to work even harder to get your attention because you already yeah. It's not a, like a, a so game where where it's like, oh, let me get to, you know, I'm curious what he looks like or how is he in bed or how is he romantically? It's like, well, you know, now I have to work harder for that because I laid everything on the table. You know that I'm open, you know, I'm as like active, you know, I'm like everything is all my stuff is out on the table. So now yeah. I'm relying on sheer essence of who I am. So that's always been my philosophy and, and how I, I look at nudity and, and those paintings, uh, you know, I, for me, nude paintings are some of the most uh, prolific paintings or way of making art. Yeah, it's a beautiful I, I love to, I, I love nude paintings. Well, beautifully um, said too, because you know, it's, there's a lot of negative connotation around. There's like per, some people taboo. Type of, it's a taboo topic. Yeah, right? for Especially sure. now it's even more so of like uh, a, I think well, people have gotten less and less comfortable with it the more they've been exposed to it also. You know? Yeah, and then another issue is that you have, you know, when photography came to the fore, yeah. you have a lot of photographers who want to shoot women. They've abused their, And they've, 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 yeah. they've put that negative energy into it because they're using it as a way to pick up on women, where I don't, honestly, are sure it might be a conversation starter with me and women, but I, I, I talk about real life things. I talk about problems and I talk about issues and I talk about others, like, you know, like deep things and deep mm -hmm. internal things when I, when I'm building rapport with women. So I've never used art as that like, Oh, you know, let me, let me paint you nude or something. And it's like, no, I, I don't always, oh, it doesn't always have to be a nude painting. You know what I mean? It, it, it could be a, a regular portrait. Some, I, I'm like, I like painting women in landscapes too. You know what I mean? Like, I like doing some clothes shit and you know, put on some like, yeah. It's 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 a funny thing when you know I see a, a person that I really want to paint and um, I only paint or I only want to paint people that I see a story in. If there's a story to tell, then I'll say, hey, I want to paint you for this reason, not because you know they're just a pretty face or anything like that. I mean, I have, there's a ton of those, but you know, if there's no story to tell, yeah. then it doesn't make it worth painting it because people don't buy pretty imagery. No. People buy stories. They do. That's why they buy, that's why people go watch movies. Mm -hmm. That's why they wear the clothes that they wear, that why they have or do the things that they do because the story that goes along with it. They don't just collect, some people do collect things because it's a pretty image, but those people run few, you know, and those are, uh, to me, those are like feeble minded people because yeah, they're, the they're, they're, they're looking at things for the surface of, you know, what it is on the surface, not for what it is internally. And for me, I've, you know, it, it's gotta mean something. Deeper than that. Yeah. It's gotta, it's gotta have a, a, a cool thing. Cause I mean, you know, people buy into stories. That's, that's what they do. I mean, that's how, that's how a lot of artists 
you know, get big because they're good storytellers. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what paintings are. I mean, if you look at the Renaissance, all those paintings had a story behind them. Yeah. They weren't just portraits. You know, they uh, even the, the portraits of the royals, the, they had us, they were telling stories that, you know, when the kings and queens and, and their and their princes and princesses and stuff w were like, they were going through stages of their life and they were commissioning portraits to, you know, marker, hey, this is, you know, That's this. That's what they left on to their descendants. Right, before right. The yeah. and then, but, the but then, you know, the Medici really changed what it was to collect art, yeah. what it was to patron uh, artists and, and to bring it forth. It became a business, right? Well, it, it, it not necessarily a business. It was a business for artists and, yeah. and architects and musicians and writers and, and, and sculptors and such, but it was more so um, Cosimo Medici wanted to bring forth light and value into art. It was about uh, the Renaissance is French for rebirth, mm -hmm. and it was about rebirthing your ideals, where the, they wanted to be like the Greeks, where the Greeks yeah. made these sculptures to up praise God, their gods, and it, and, it, and, it, and it gave people this sense of value, like what it meant to be human and document that, yeah, like these, these it's, it's like I've always felt like wherever you see art, there's hope. Because when there's art, there's people that are being a little self, art is to me selfless. Yeah. I look at art as selflessness because I'm giving it, I'm creating this thing and then I'm giving it to the rest of the world. I'm not, I'm not keeping it for myself. For I hate when motherfuckers say, oh uh, yeah, I got all this stuff in my vault and I just, I, I'm, I just don't want to share it. It's like, it's just the dumbest fucking thing you could ever say. It's retarded. Like, why? You might inspire the next master, or you, like art is to, to be, be shared. It's not for you. It's you're like a conduit. Yeah. So you're 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 a you're a, a conductor, uh, and electricity is yeah. flowing through you, and you're supposed to pass it on. Yeah. It's not a gift. It's not a, a gift for or, everybody. Else. Yeah. It's not, not a not gift for you. you. It's for everybody right. else. And and that's how but I've always looked at so art. Troubled when they're. Uh, you know what I mean? Held I, back or not able to yeah, freely I, give it out. You know? I got some friends who are like, you know. And people were persecuted in the times you're talking about uh, in the same it, regard. It, it, yeah, you know, yeah, fucking. Because that wasn't the best the best job title to have back in the Renaissance either. Uh, well, art? Art, yeah. Um, I mean, it was very highly regarded, but it was very scrutinized and punishable as well. Well, it depends. It, well, it depends if you were like a Caravaggio who was, you know, being very rebellious and, and whatnot. But yeah. artists had total respect and because you know art artists were commissioned by the pope and they were by dukes and cardinals yeah for sure for sure well because the way they saw fit if the more art you had the more power you had you had value you had assets you had mm -hmm. these you were rich you know if you had art i mean look at the medici i mean look at the medici they commissioned all types of paintings i mean crazy paintings but look at all the storytelling that has taken place 500 years later because of those paintings, not because of manuscripts, yeah. because of the paintings. I mean, manuscripts tell a lot too, but the paintings. The manuscripts get lost. They get shelved away a lot of times. Yeah, you and have it, to dig through and find them. Yeah, no one's People gonna go on tours through Italy to see the art. Right. The you art I mean? is the paintings and the sculptures and the Would textiles. Would I go crazy if I could reinterpret the shit that's in the Vatican vaults? Of course, bro. I'm like, I love knowledge, right? Yeah. But that's not like, it can be hidden, right? That stuff sure. is stuff you have to search for. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to read the scrolls of Alexandria just of as course, much as the so. next person, but yeah. <laughs> I want to see some fucking paintings and sculptures. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that that stuff I'm is. I'm hitting the museums every time. Dude, I cry and learning so about the life much. Of the yeah, and then and then sure. that level of craftsmanship gives you a whole new respect of like, like what it takes to give your love to something. You know, I mean. Anything can be art. I just said this to my homie yesterday. You know, he asked me, what is art to you? And I'm like, anything is yeah. art as long as it moves you. Yeah. And music is art. Fashion is art. Cooking is art. Everything is art. I, I mean. If, as long as there's passion behind it. Yeah. If there, but if it, like. That's I, how everybody used to live their life, bro. Right. You it see. It doesn't matter if you were in the field or yeah. in the kitchen or, or everybody had a, a, a life purpose and they were following that. And it could be the simplest thing or the most, the most, uh. You know what I mean? The most uh, 
extravagant thing, but it, it doesn't matter because it's art in between, right? Yeah. It's art I mean, in the process even of life. Even warfare can be art. It was art. I mean, the art of war, it's there's the there's, there's, uh, there's uh, craftsmanship that goes into it. I mean, dude, did you know that Da Vinci wanted, uh, he not wanted, but he did make warfare devices. Oh, I've seen them, yeah. I, I, well, I mean, we're not even talking about the precursor to the modern tank and helicopter yeah, all and all that stuff. that stuff. We're talking about I've seen his wings like and trying to take building flight, all of catapults, that stuff. Yeah, catapults and crazy shit, like yeah. like straight torture devices and, mm -hmm. and it, dude, he was a wicked engineer. He made maps yeah. for, I, I believe, the Duke of Milan and w like they were untouchable at that point. Like Florence and, and Milan, like when, when like they were like going back and forth and trying to, it's like some parts of Italy were ran by other people and they wanted to expand or take over and, and take yeah. over other parts. It, like this fool was making maps for people and like he wanted to be uh, an engineer and create, he had all these crazy ass ideas for warfare. It was crazy. Yeah, some pretty like, some pretty advanced for the time. Oh, dude! I mean, yeah. crazy advanced stuff. I, it's like it's nuts, and and it takes a level of craftsmanship and creativity. I, I take that back. It takes a lot of craftsmanship and creativity to be able to. Uh, Didn't he write in his own in his stuff. own language or something? Isn't like all of his notes in like shorthand? Like no, 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 no. The Da Vinci was left-handed. Yeah. So naturally, <laughs> well, no, well, <laughs> he was. I'm left-handed, so I know. That are you I, really? Yes. When I do all those signings, wow, like I'm, sick. I'm known for like just dragging my hand across you everything. Just, it's just, just all fucking all over the. Yeah, place. like Conor McGregor's signature yeah. is just a big ass circle, yeah. <laughs> so fucked up. People are waiting hours in line, and it's just a circle on his necks. Yeah. But um, no, no. So Da Vinci was left-handed, okay. and he naturally was able to write from right to left. But it came more naturally to write backwards, like literally writing the characters backwards. So if you want to read Da Vinci's notebooks, you have to put a mirror to, to it so that you see the reflected and then read side Italian and then you can read it from left to right. Was it Italian or Latin? Was Latin, Latin, yeah, Latin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Latin was spoken yeah. 500 years ago. Yeah. Wow, so. pretty cool. Um, what uh, where do you want to go in the future? Uh, I'm, I mean, McDonald's is right around the street, so maybe McDonald's <laughs> is not playing. Um, I'm like, in shit, it's career, too early for life. the strip club, or <laughs> um, <laughs> nah, I for that inspiration. <laughs> right, yeah, I need some more models to paint of the Virgin Mary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's fucked up. Uh, um, is it? Is it though? It's. I mean, I mean, it's, it's just a story. The eye of the beholder, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um. Well, I don't know because you know I, I'm involved in a lot of different things. I do music. I act. I model. I do clothes, and you know, I do a bunch of different up. stuff. Yeah. So, I have to leave art behind once in a while to go get inspiration from other things, and I don't mean leave it behind like months and months on end. I'm, I literally mean like just a couple of hours or a couple of days at max, you know, yeah. all right, let me just take a break from painting, go do something else. And then I'll come right back to painting. You know, I think the longest time I took a break from painting was when I went to Europe for a month, um, January of last year, 2022. And uh, man, I, that just floored me, you know, that just floored everything. And I came back stronger and more inspired than yeah, ever. Inspired I mean, I did my whole show you because quit of it. You see it. Oh, dude, I, I just, just wanted to harder. keep painting and painting until I didn't want to paint no more, actually. And um, so that was, you know, really dope. And but so, you know, doing that, getting out of art for a while and getting inspiration. So I think in the future, I just I, I want to, you know, dabble into more things and travel more and and share my art in different ways. I love doing collaborative projects. I like seeing my, my art on take new forms, whether it's clothing or different type of merch and toys and stuff like that. Or, um, or cannabis. Or cannabis, you know. Um, th I think that that's super fun to see my art take a new uh, life and be per uh, perceived in a different way when it's put on something else, you know. And I want to do more stuff like that. Um, but where my art will go, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I've done pretty much all that I, you know, really set out to do. I mean, there's a, obviously there's still more to be done. I mean, I would love to do museum shows and 
and you know see my art right i've done i've been in you know i've shown my work in museums before but you know there's a lot bigger scale stuff to do but um it's good to find happiness and have peace with with what we've created you know yeah i mean i think if i if i (laughs) i mean if i died today i I, i'd be pretty satisfied with what i've done with my work and i think i've painted enough to leave a good amount behind and tell a lot of stories you know and um, yeah, it's morbid, but I think about that as well. I've obviously had multiple careers, yeah, and children, I mean, and things, but I yeah. feel like, God forbid, that if I did, I could be happy with the, the amount of, of things that I've, I've left. Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm 26, and I'm already having a quarter life crisis, you know. I feel but, you. but you know, like I'm I was big, there too because yeah. I started at six. So yeah. by the time I was in my 20s, bro, I was mad, lost, like just trying to figure out what next yeah. well, what the fuck you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. uh i feel like i've lived a whole life already and yeah. then maybe it was a life that i didn't even want to live but mm-hmm. here i am and now i don't know what i want to do so it, it definitely has its like i can tell you right now traveling is going to make you find something yeah i want to travel more That's when you tra- honestly my biggest regret is that having a child young and being so wrapped up in in acting and these things yeah. that like not being able to experience anything outside of work mm. and still to this day i mean i don't move around a whole bunch unless yeah. there's like money on the other end of it pretty well, much yeah you know? i mean that's when and it's a shame because i would love to like you know that's what i try to tell my kids to like just go and like experience life and learn and grow yeah. and, and soak up these other cultures because it's a shame you know I, like i I'd really have liked to have been backpacking through Europe as a young man, just being free and nothing on my schedule type of yeah. deal, you know? That would have been a really cool place. Dude, I have friends that have never left California. Yeah, bro. I mean, look at people in New York that, like, have That's... never left their block or their borough or, like, you know what I mean? There's so many stories of it. Dude, that's it, it heartbreaking. It's, it's, it's a shame, bro, yeah. They're so Because when I went to, I, I mean, I've been to not a lot of places, a, a few, more than a lot of people that I know. But, uh, you know, Peru and Cuba were amazing to see. And Mexico alone, not just like TJ. I mean, everybody's oh. trying to go to Hong Kong, but no. <laughs> we're talking about like deep Mexico. into like real Mexico. the, yeah, like South Mexico. Um, like, it's just, it's, so ch- it's changing. Yeah, it's, I mean, to, even when I went to Hawaii, I mean, technically it's still U.S. soil, but it doesn't feel like the U.S. when you're out there. You know, it, you, you feel like you're on sacred land. And, and I loved being around that Polynesian culture and, and, yeah. and, and seeing the locals and smelling new smells and tasting new foods and, and ingredients and, and hearing people talk about, you know, um, different like folklore tales of that, yeah. that are within it's their belief. Island, yeah. Island, yeah. That, and, and those are just like so close to me. America strips Europe was stuff. even a whole nother ball. Cause I went around, like I, I landed in Germany from Germany, went to Denmark, Denmark, went down to Italy, worked my way up to Paris, went through the Netherlands. And wow. that was like, that was super, trip. yeah, oh, it was, it was a Euro trip for sure. That's dope. Yeah. I got into some shit. Did <laughs> you? Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was into, it was like Euro trip. Pretty, was it? It was pretty close to that. Yeah. Dude, I literally Luckily went there to go see a girl. Slava, bro. Dude, I went there to go see a girl. To Europe? Yeah, in Amsterdam. When I got there, she ghosted me. Shut up. I swear. She catfished or what? No, she j- I, I we've been f- we were friends in LA and she moved oh. back to Europe and then I went and I was like she was part she ghosted up? me when I got there. Wow. We were texting as I was like bouncing around through Europe and I was like, Hey, I'm hitting Amsterdam next and then when I got there she's like ghosted. She's gone. She's ghost, yeah. How did that how did that I was pissed. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> like so I immediately went to the red light district. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, but it was a, it was literally a Euro trip, dude. I it's swear, dope. it was it was exactly it was exactly like Good, that. Bro. I thought I, I was gonna end up in Bratislava. So. I, I can vicariously live through you, so I love hearing about all this like it was fun. Uh, this. I wouldn't say debauchery, but like just oh, it's good debauchery. Time. Yeah, it is. But yeah, it's it's you know total I mean. fuckery exactly for sure. It, it's cool to uh, I mean, I, I think how many times have I told you not to have kids or get married right away? Dude, I hear it every day. I yeah. just I just was talking to my just homie Marco general. about and it. It's not yeah. about like that. My children are are my yeah. are my biggest love and my, and my greatest creation. Yeah. I love that, yeah. but I love like the idea of somebody being free and knowing that 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 yeah. creates an anchor. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, yeah. that keeps you in a place yeah. too. You know what I mean? If, if you want to be present, I yeah, mean, obviously yeah, there's, there's yeah. fathers that are. Yeah. I mean, if I, they want, you, know? you know, when I was in my real, my last relationship, I thought we might have, you know, had Ended kids and got we would have 
went that whole route. And if I did, I mean, I, I, I would have taken responsibility. My parents had me really young. You know, my mm -hmm. dad was 23. My mom, well, my mom was 16, born at 17. Yeah. So she was really young. But, um, and my mom was a teenager when she had me as well. Yeah. I, I, I think that's just what it was in the 90s, dude, in the 80s. Probably, and, yeah. was probably similar, like 20, 20 ish, 21. Yeah. You know, that's just what it was pre, you yeah. know, Y2K. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I think if, you know, if it happens, it happens. I mean, hopefully it, it happens when I'm ready because I'm right now I don't feel like it. I mean, you know, there's still a lot of uh, financial building to do and a lot of uh, finding myself person. and growing exactly. as a person. I mean, I, I really can't because I'm too busy, you know, taking care of my family. And, um, you know, I got <laughs> my, my dad has a three year old now. My mom has a three year old and a one year old. So it's like those are like, you, you know, my little ones. Yeah, they're kids. <laughs> that, they're, yeah, I already do. Yeah. My parents are my kids. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah. But, you know, I, I'm definitely trying to enjoy as much as I can. I was just talking to my homie Marco uh, yeah. or saying that, you know, we need to take off. I'm ready to go and like go back to Hawaii or something or, yeah. you know, go somewhere next. This fool's like dying to go to Tokyo. I want to go to Japan. That's, that's what Literally I was, was like, dude, I don't want to, but he, he wants Tokyo to go for like a trip. month and I'm like, bro, I'm I like, would do that, bro. I would go for a month, but I'm like, I got shit going on yeah, here that too. I can't just like, like, it, like I'm on a, I'm on like on standby. If I got to run in the Inland yeah. Empire, I got to fucking bolt really quick and handle shit and then come right back. You yeah, know, so. Tokyo's on my list. I've never been, and I'm like super into like just Japanese culture. Oh, but dude, like, yeah, same. I've been like heavy on Japanese fashion blogs lately, and just yeah, like all dude. the denim and like vintage stores and like shit. Is dude, like the, the fucking Japs and Chinese, they do it the best. The best they bro. they do it so they good. They take us and like an American culture. Oh, dude, they, they make it so it much crazier, level. bro. So much cooler, dude. So I was talking to a homie of mine who was working from Nike, and he was telling me that he was working in Nike Hong Kong or something, uh -huh. and and. Like oh, they they, all the oh shit. dude, that they were like U.S. Nike was only doing like joggers and shit. Yeah. And in China, they were fucking doing like Stone Island type oh, shit. Yeah, of course. And they were like, bro, we gotta switch it Next up. Level. Yeah, they they're doing they're like ten years ahead. Of course. Yeah, they're doing some crazy shit. I mean, they're always, I mean, even the tech. They got iPhone yeah. 30s out there already. <laughs> <laughs> they're already. I'm they surprised don't they don't have flying cars there. out there yet. I mean, and I'm here, sure they do. Here they were flying a balloon over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a little sus, though. Yeah, for sure. It was crazy. And I'm like, I, I would have just thought it was a blimp or something. You know, I was like, let's take that motherfucker down. <laughs> they should have put Goodyear on it, and they would have gotten <laughs> away. Yeah. I've seen I've seen some really good memes of, like, what, what, what the, they were viewing, and it's just, like, some dude in a bikini with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's so crazy as shit. Fucking like peeping Tom. Yeah. Looking at some gnarly shit, trying to catch a... Yeah, a Tokyo's, football game or something. Tokyo's on my list for sure. Yeah, dude, I want to go to Japan. I would love to go to China, China just to check it out. Africa, dude, Hong Kong, I I'd, I want to go see Egypt so bad. I would love I'm to go to Egypt. I'd, I'd be with, down to take an Africa tour too. Just dude, to experience oh, it. all of it. I mean, yeah. I, there are some parts of Africa that are obviously really bad and sketchy, but I don't know. I'd like. I just. I, I would I like go anyway. Situations I, anyway. Dude, yeah, I like doing it's the dangerous like a, shit. I come I mean, I used to go to TJ by myself when I was a kid, when I was young, bro, and just run around like I don't, I, like, I don't have crazy. This I don't bring forth bad intentions. Running around with fucking narcos and shit. I don't bring forth bad intentions, and like yeah. the environment responds well to me in that. Yeah, in that I record. You know, I feel yeah. like if you come with like an open heart and, and you're and just like, hey, I'm here experience visiting. Yeah, I'm here part of the. I'm trying to you know see a and different. I feel culture. like you're pleasantly surprised in those places too. I feel like people expect the worst. Yeah, and then you find that some of the most beautiful things and the, all of the beauty comes in those, in those places that have a fear no. based around them. I mean, America is probably notion. the worst place. I think that yeah, we probably <laughs> live in Los Angeles and one of the most dangerous places. Uh, yeah, like I mean, <laughs> motherfuckers planet, are well. dying every day out here. They shot, stabbed, car crash. I mean, you drunk driving. It's crazy. It could be a police brutality. It's crazy out here. Nothing's promised, bro. Yeah, uh, L.A., New York, and Chicago. It's not. wild. It's really crazy. Imagine what the rest of the world thinks about us. Oh, yeah. They probably I like, I'm right not going to fucking America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they come. But oh, dude, I love, though, when I hear people talking about, like, dude, I want to go to L.A., but I'm so scared to go. And I'm like, well, you should be. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you like should be. Key, like, it's, 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 it's key, don't be just, hide, just hide your watches. Yeah, and, like, and, don't. And don't look like a tourist. But the promise, the, the, pro the problem is, you know, you, you they, they want to, like, 
go fucking around in the the the, 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 the yeah. be the tour and go around in the shitty parts. It's like no, go fucking see the beaches. Stay in the white neighborhoods. You'll be fine. Like you'll be good. Like come in a group and like you'll be alright. Yeah. But like you go around like, I never understand like like rappers that come to LA and and they like go to like the hood. They immediately go to the hood. It's like, why? Like you're dumb. Why would you do that? Why why would you do that? Like look 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 at P and B Rock, in fucking the hood at Chick Roscoe's. Like why would you do that? You could literally be kicking into fucking Beverly Hills and like yeah. in a gated community where there's cops everywhere. Like you're tripping, dude. Don't do it. Don't I do it. I don't was, like. I, I don't. I think he was probably just downtown and it was probably closer. It just you know? still. But you know better. Oh yes, you know you better. And then you're too. wearing all the jewelry. Yeah, he probably knew better. Too. Yeah, you know, I mean. People get. Uh, people get comfortable wanting to be connected with the culture. Yeah, you like, can't do that when you don't got security around. Even if you do have security, it's not worth it. It's it's better to have it, not yeah, you know. 100%. I mean, I, I believe like me. Look, I'm born and raised in 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 and out of this city, so I'm, I stay on my p's and q's whenever I'm walking around. I don't. A lot of guys, and if you see a lot of well-to-do artists from LA, you notice that they're not heavy on the jewelry and heavy on the chains or heavy on everything, right? No, no. You notice that like that's not really an yeah LA like the thing. Kendricks and the the and stuff yeah Kendrick don't really no you don't you don't need it yeah. maybe if he's at the Grammys or something yeah yeah for sure and he's wearing he's a fucking Tiffany crown, diamond like, yeah, crown crazy <laughs> shit. realistically he's a pretty tame like yeah he's not he's from LA know that yeah. that type of attention could bring yeah. harm bro yeah it's, it's for sure simple it does as that. you yeah. know you don't come from this and and know that. You know, they're, you're not safe anywhere here. Anymore. Yeah, dude, I just almost got into it with a fucking cracker the other day in Mid City. I'm like, Mid City of all places, it was a white ass neighborhood that I was in, and this fucking dude was just acting crazy. I was like, bro, like, it doesn't matter. you don't. I'm like, don't, don't. I'm just, just get out of my, get out of my fucking my path. I'm like, you don't want to cross my path, man. So. Yeah. All right, wrapping up. Um, where can people find you? at? Um, when you want like my address or <laughs> social, uh, yeah, um, Instagram is probably the best way to keep up with whatever it is that I got going on. Um, at Isaac Palayo, I S A A C P as in Patrick E L A Y O. And then Palayo images now too. Yeah, Palayo. Well, all my other handles are in my bio, all my right. tattoo page, and my oh, photography okay. page. Yeah, and we didn't even get into tattooing. I know. We're gonna have stuff. to do another do we'll another do, we'll session. We got tattooing, we got photography, we got music, we got yeah, fashion, we got, we got porn. No, I'm like, <laughs> 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 yeah, we got we got um, all types of stuff. Anything you want to leave the people with? Um, I mean, you know, I, I I'm not I'm not too sure. I just you know, as far as motivation yeah motivation goes i mean you know just keep uh keep at whatever it is that you're doing and you know i just had this i just posted something yesterday on i tweeted something it was something along the lines of you know people are doing things for all the wrong reasons they're not doing things for themselves i don't do art for anybody else i don't do art to sell it i don't do art for fame for notoriety for for uh relationship making anything like that i do it for me and me only i would do it if i was fucking homeless you know I've, I've done it broke and i've done it well like well off I, it doesn't matter to me you know so whatever it is that you're doing do it do it for you and you only and and, uh, and passionately and only good things will come of that that's so. a beautiful thing yeah, i feel I like same. I, I uh you know cannabis has been for me not to mm. to, to for anything else you know yeah. i liked growing weed so that's what yeah. i did you know yeah. but it was because i liked to do it you know? yeah I didn't quit acting to grow weed because I thought it was going to be a, a financially sound choice. Yeah. And it probably wasn't, but it, you know, that's what yeah. I was into. So you can't smoke the supply. Be true to though. yourself, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, somebody's got to smoke it. <laughs> ten, ten crack commandments, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, you know. It doesn't really, it doesn't really cross over that way. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a little bit different of an animal, but yeah, yeah, I understand where Biggie was coming from. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Got a different landscape. Yeah. I'm but more, I'm more, you know, we have. We're farmers, bro. This is more cartel. Yeah, but, but you're, you know? bot, you're a botanist, dude. No, yeah, nobody tells you're, Chapo you're what to you're snort. You're a you know botanist. I mean? yeah, Chapo can snort whatever he wants. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a little bit of a different scene. Uh, you know? some uh, we're actually creating yeah. this shit. So. Maybe a little uh, cyanide in that, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Take care of no, some things. Oh, bro. <laughs> some this, uh, some sodium, sodium nitrate. Or have something. you seen that video of somebody trying to po poison Putin? No. There's a, so there's a video of them at, at some, like, they're in like a square and like some it, like in the, oh, no, the movie the interview type shit where he's no, like trying bro, to shake like his he hand tries to, he said he tries to hand him some gum he tried hands the guy next to him gum 
and then he hands it to Putin, and Putin says, uh, I'm okay, I'm good. That dude died, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that dude that took it, and Putin was like... He was like, dude, I was just trying to kill him. I was yeah. giving you some winter oh fresh. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, boy, took it first. So I guess, like, that was, like, wow. yeah, that's one of the most publicized, like, assassination attempts ever is, like... It was pretty dude, smooth, literally, though. Yeah, he like, said, here, you, you got to watch he's the like, video. Tic-tac, he's, he's like, dude, you need it. He's just like... like, no, I'm good. And, and, and the guy's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I guess, like... <laughs> I guess Homeboy was trying to poison him. But the confidence level in that must oh, have been bro, ridiculous. Standing right next just to the like, dude. He's just like, give this Homeboy. <laughs> and you want one? And pop one himself. He's like, all right, go pop one. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, just don't chew the wrong one. Hey, be careful who you get gum from. For Before real, dude. Anything, that's, that's not crazy. But you know, it's like, it's a trip. Dude, there's so many sneaky ways to, to do that shit. And we, we, we can get that's into that off episode. camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean. Look at the ice man. That motherfucker was killing fools with, yeah, that was some si- with shit. cyanide. He you know, was, uh, he was passionate about his job. Oh, for sure. dude, he was th- he was uh, an expert at it. Yeah, he brought that shit down to an art again, yeah, the art it, of it killing. Passion. Yeah, it, he was. It, it's the art of anything. Yeah. Oh, dude, he made it down to. That a, is actually humans. Uh, uh, I feel like that is our like our driving force. You know. Is to create art and anything, you know, and the passion that comes with that. Well, to whether it's coding or, or construction or yeah. it doesn't matter what we do. And mm-hmm. in turn, we're building, even if it's just a machine that is a business or an automated YouTube channel, yeah. you're creating a, um, yeah. a, a thing, right? Everybody wants to art in itself. become master level at what they do. You know? Yeah. To be anything. So, so well, thanks for everybody uh, listening, like, and subscribe. And, uh, you know, hit Isaac's... Uh, Instagram to see all this dope art. I'm a, I'm a collector myself. I love his pieces. There you are. And, uh, you know, look forward to the cool things we have in the works together as well. Man, you and said you were going to buy a painting today, right? Yep. Cool. I got one in like 50 racks. <laughs> 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 there you go. Another painting sold. Take care, guys.